Hey there Wargamers, this is Justin from Amp Services with this week's Tactical Tuesday video. Before we get started with this discussion, I'd like to encourage you guys to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and uh, help the channel grow. With that being said, let's jump right into the discussion. So, this is a, a build that I'm working on that I'm sure has swept the internet before. It's something that I've been working on myself now. Um, so, if someone else came up with it before me, which I'm sure they did, apologies, uh, but this is what I'm working on. So, uh, this is... Um, my Devastator Grav Death Star unit that I deployed via a drop pod. There's just no drop pod in the video. Uh, but for this build to work, you would ideally want a drop pod. So first off, let's talk about a couple of the models here that look funny. Um, before the comments start freaking out, asking about the color of the bits here. I went on eBay and was buying bits and apparently the seller I bought these from was a recaster and I did not know. Um, I personally wasn't that worried about it, but um, I ended up with a couple of recast models, uh, not necessarily by intention. So these came in this way. Um, I wasn't terribly worried about it, but uh, just so you guys know, that happened. Uh, and you can see I have three, you know, regular devastators here, so they're they're normal. Um, now, uh, let's talk about the elements here. There are a few few different things. So first of all, we've got the for this build to work, you got to have the primary five devastator models. So you've got your four grav cannons in this particular case, which is what I would suggest for this build, and your sergeant. Now you can outfit these for this build to work uh, with any type of heavy weapon that you want. Um, the initial drop pod uh, Devastators works a little bit better with grav cannons, no matter how you do it. I mean, if you ignore these two models, that right there in a drop pod is still effective because when it lands, the grav cannons are salvo um, three slash five. So if you are within 12 inches, each one of these can still fire three shots each and the sergeant, if he's in range, can fire his combi weapon, which in this case happens to be a grav. Now, if you're a salamander player, um, with uh, the rest of this build, which would require this guy in particular, you could switch these out to multi meltas so that you're twin linked on the initial drop, um, if you run a Vulcan, uh, that is, uh, or any other type of variant. Um, insert X weapon here that suits your army's needs. For my particular army, I was missing a lot of AP2 weapons, I was having a problem with tanks. Grav is getting the job done for me. So, uh, moving on in terms of uh, what's goes into creating this build. We've got a an Imperial Marine and we've got a uh, Cataphractic Terminator. Now this is uh, the one, um, I believe this is a Forge World model. Uh, this, was, this is also an online purchase um, order. The weapon was a little bit funky so I cut it off and we have a um, Demon Hunter, Grey Knight, excuse me, uh, Power Sword, Force Sword. It's meant to be a Relic Blade. So now, this guy is the key to the um, Death Star Devastator drop pod. The Triple D. Um, the reason why this guy is important is because in Angels of Death, for a Codex Marine player, uh, it grants us access to Cataphracty Terminator armor. One of the key benefits of this armor, um, other than just the pure stats that it provides, is that it has slow and purposeful builds in. Uh, because it has the slow and purposeful special rule, it conveys slow and purposeful to the unit. So if you haven't connected those dots yet, that means if this guy jumps into a drop pod with your Devastators as part of your combined arms detachment, or your um, battle company or demi company, he conveys relent or not relentless uh, slow and purposeful to the Devastators, which means on the initial drop pod assault, those Devastators are popping out firing up to full ballistic skill, full shots. That's four grav cannons and a combi grav firing five shots per cannon and three shots from the guy at full ballistic skill at full range. That's huge. This guy is brutal. Now, uh, again, you can um, switch these out for whatever type of heavy weapon suits your army's needs. If you have, if grab's not going to really fit a void for you, pick the weapons that will. But this works great for me. Um, it's an in-your-face style of loadout, and these guys hit hard, especially for an ultramarine player when you're using your uh, uh, mission doctrines or tactical doctrines. You pop the, um, uh, or mission tactics rather, um, I guess what it's called. Uh, you pop your Devastator Doctrine on the turn that these guys land, and ideally you're landing two units of them on turn one or turn two if you can, uh, or a unit of these and a unit of, dev or of uh, Devastator Centurions so that you're uh, maximizing the re-rolls or 
yeah, basically twin linked. Now, the rest of the build on this particular model, I believe that's a Volkite from Forge World. What I'm using it as is the Primarch's Wrath. I think I got that right. Um, and he comes with a power sword. Sometimes I pay for the Relic Blade if I have points. If not, it's a power sword. The big deal with the Primarch's uh, Wrath, though, is that it is a bolt gun that's strength 4, AP 4, Salvo 3, 5, Shred. Because he's in Terminator armor, he can always move and fire that at the higher number. So he drop pods in with those Devastators, and he's got Ballistic Skill 5, and he's hitting on 2s with a weapon that has Shred. So he's going to lay down some firepower too. Granted, it doesn't have the AP 2, but he's still laying down some nice shots. And if I recall in the book, I think it states that a unit with an IC attached um, conveys that unit type to him for your... Um, uh, mission tactics or whatever it's called so if I recall if you use the uh, Devastator Doctrine on the turn that they land he benefits because he's in the unit so he should be rerolling ones don't quote me on that but I'm 99.9% .9 positive that's right I'm sure somebody out there that's watching this might be able to um, confirm um, whether I'm right or not but I believe I am uh, one of the other benefits uh, of him or upgrade you might choose if you have the points would be Auspex. That comes in at, I believe, five points for the Auspex. And because uh, you may not always need to be firing your Primarch's Wrath, if that's what you're using, which I recommend, um, if you land close enough, you, I believe it's 12 inches, you can strip a cover save away from the unit you're firing at. So maybe it's an IG tank with camo netting or night fighting's on, and you really want to make sure those grabs go through. If you land in danger close and he's 12 inches away, you can strip one cover from them and forego his shooting and let those um, sin or, uh, devastators here, you know, do some work. Now, the little extra here is the Imperial Marine. Now, when I said this is a drop pod um, devastator Death Star, I was serious. So now you'll you'll upgrade your five man unit with again your your four special weapons you want, the combi weapon of your choice on the sergeant. In this particular case, the uh, combi grav pairs really well with the cataphractic terminator because he conveys uh, slow and purposeful so you're always firing three shots on that initial volley with him instead of the uh, lower number so that pairs the best with him um, if you're maximizing the slow and purposeful it's granted now this particular guy works really well because you upgrade the devastator unit to have a sixth member who's a stage just called a space marine and you can swap any space marine model with the uh, Imperial Marine, if I recall the rules, for free. Now, he's got a, I believe it's range 18, rapid fire, strength 5, AP 2, um, gets hot, instant death gun. His pistol is similar stats as well, but I believe it's, uh, you said range 9 or 12 with the same stats, no rapid fire. Um, he's really good too, because if you land within super close, 9 inches, with that captain, um, well, I guess it's a captain really doesn't matter, but if you land within nine inches, you're firing rapid fire with this guy. You are hitting on threes, and because of the doctrine, you're re-rolling your ones and twos, so you're helping mitigate gets hot, and it's strength five, which is going to wound mo be able to wound most things, and it has instant death. So you're talking about optimally, if you land at nine inches away, you've got 20 grav cannon shots twin linked on that initial turn because of the uh, Devastator Doctrine. Possibly three more um, combi grab shots also twin linked um, because of um, the uh, Devastator Doctrine. And again, if you're nine inches, rapid fire strength five AP two shots from this guy that's strength five. So if we add that all together, you've got 20 grab cannon, three combi grab, two from this. So 25 shots that are all AP2, reroll and twin linked. Whatever you bring these guns to bear on in the shooting phase is going to be smoking if it's not dead. It's absolutely brutal. And again, if you have the points for all specs, this guy right here can really enhance their effectiveness if need be. Now, the major downside to this, if you guys try this build, because he grants soul and purposeful to the unit, they can deep strike and still fire full ballistic skill on the higher number on their salvo chart. And they can move and shoot with their heavy weapons. Again, full you know uh, shots on the salvo. The biggest problem is if you're slow and purposeful, you can't overwatch. 
So that means these guys are target priority number one for assault units. They're gonna charge you because you can't overwatch. They're gonna lock you in combat because if they can't kill you at range, let's say, you know, for hypothetically, this guy's out in the front tanking all the shots with his two up armor save. If they can't get through his armor to kill your unit, they're just gonna charge. You know, it's worth throwing a throwaway unit at this Death Star to stop the shots. So when you're trying to position these to leverage them against your opponent, you have to think about what, how they're going to react. So you may want to screen, you may want to have some tactical marines that are going to run in front of them, or a rhino or something that's going to drive in front of them to block them off. Or you may want to save, you know, you may not even run this guy right here at all. You know, because he's going to put you needing to be at um, 18 inches for the one shot, 9 inches for the rapid fire. You may find that this just puts you uh, too close to harm's way, so you may drop pod these guys in it, you know, 18 inches away, 24 inches on the dot. Um, you may just put these guys right on the line to be able to shoot at what you want and be a maximum distance away so that um, you minimize being assaulted and you minimize uh, the damage that they're going to incur. But I can tell you, just to reiterate, running these is very similar to running drop pod centurions. If you do not plan to protect them or position them properly, your opponent is going to turn around after you unleash your first uh, turn of you know, holy shooting hell. They're going to turn around and they're going to blast the crap out of them and or assault them. So you got to have a contingency plan on how to protect them. So with that being said, what do you guys think? Is this something you've tried? Uh, is this something you want to try now? Let's get a discussion sounded off below. Is there a different combo that does similar effects for Codex Marines that I don't know about? Let's talk about it. Maybe it's something I'd like to try and discuss. Uh, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you haven't already, please uh, make sure to like, subscribe. Uh, as always, happy wargaming.